Good evening, Go. We are tuned in to 105.4 FM a Rainbow. A big thank you to my colleague Nirmala, who was here and she's just headed home. Now, on the occasion of the World Breast Feeding Week, we have with us here in the studio this evening Dr. Sophia Rodericks, a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist at the Manipal Hospital, Donna Paula. And she's going to chat up with us and everything that you want to know about the World Breast Feeding Week. This is uh, not just for expecting mothers, but also the ones who are breastfeeding. Everyone can just uh, tune in and uh, ask your queries uh, to our numbers 8380071054. Uh, good evening, doctor, and welcome to our studio. Good evening, Velma. Thank you very much for the warm welcome over here. Yeah, most welcome, doctor. I'm sure we'll have a good time uh, right up to 9 p.m. Definitely. Yeah. Billy Joel, uh, she's always a woman. Oh, and she never gives out. And she never gives in. She just changes her mind. And she'll promise you more than the Garden of Eden. And she'll carelessly cut you and laugh while you're bleeding. But you bring out the best and the worst you can be Blame it all on yourself Cause she's always a woman to me Ahead of her time. Oh, and she never gives out, and she never gives in. She just changes her mind. She is frequently kind, and she's suddenly cool. But she can do as she pleases, she's nobody's fool. She can't be convicted, she's earned her degree And the most she will do is throw shadows at you But she's always a woman to me She is always a woman. Uh, that is uh, what uh, Billy Joel uh, just uh, sang for us. And uh, there are two women right now in the house for you, dear listeners. Now, th- I'm sure you know that World Breastfeeding Week is a global campaign to raise awareness and galvanize action on themes related to breastfeeding. And to tell us, lay people, more about this, I have the expert here with us in the house, uh, Dr. Sophia Rodericks, consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist at Manipal Hospital at Donna Paula. So, uh, doctor, you know, we shall start with just the basics. Okay. And uh, if you could tell all our listeners why the need to celebrate World Breastfeeding Week. So, Breastfeeding Week is celebrated in the first week of August every year by more than 120 countries. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. This is to encourage and support breastfeeding for the health and well-being of every mother and child. Okay. And... uh, A great doctor, but uh, could you also tell us uh, the theme of the World Breastfeeding Week? It's a wonderful theme this year. Let's make breastfeeding and work, work. Mm -hmm. Work, work. Yes. So it sounds uh, rhyming, but it's a wonderful theme because nowadays we see working mothers at the brunt of not able to breastfeed their babies because of which we see so many complications and problems in the babies as well as the mothers. Okay. So definitely working mothers is the uh, mainstay and the focus of this year's theme. And we really need to encourage breastfeeding for all working mothers. So that's why let's yes. make a breastfeeding work work. work yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, could we um, 
let's move ahead with le- yet another question you know and then we'll break in for a song sure. too um something that every expecting mother i'm sure would want to know um how to breastfeed a child a very basic breastfeed, question breastfeeding is an art and a gift that is given by god uh, so the baby needs to be held very close to the mother facing the mother support the baby on the side on your forearm okay. uh, such that the nose of the baby is pointing your nipple uh, okay. stimulate the lips of the baby either with your finger or with the nipple itself so that the baby senses the mother's presence and opens its mouth and okay. then always see that the entire black of the uh, breast that is the areola and the nipple are inside the baby's mouth this is called very good latching so that we don't have problems uh, of painful nipples and painful breasts later on uh, so this is a simple way and a simple technique of holding the baby okay and i'm sure that's where they say um, something so basic like this uh, the basic love between a mother and a child i i guess blossoms from here right from the womb to the breastfeeding to and then it progresses from there later on in life yes yes it creates a very very special and emotional bond for the mother and baby now if you could tell our listeners uh, the benefits of breastfeeding uh, the mothers and the babies uh, whichever one you would like to start first i'm sure both have benefits right yeah so both have good amount of benefits okay i'll start with the benefits to the baby first uh, so babies get just the right amount of nutrition uh, through breast milk mm-hmm. uh, it is so designed made designer milk that i would say for every baby at every stage of life in the first month of uh, delivery the milk composition is different and the following month it becomes different uh, for a preterm baby also it is different as compared to a term baby which is really wonderful how the human body prepares milk for its own baby uh, and i always say never replace human milk with cow's milk because cow's milk is meant for cow babies and human milk is made for human babies as simple as that okay. the second uh, point that i would say is protection from short term as well as long term illnesses uh, human milk has so much of antibodies especially the first part of the milk which is called as cholesterol cholesterol okay. is called as liquid gold Okay. Many mothers think it is something which has to be removed the first thick milk and throw they throw it out but yeah. that's a big mistake uh, in fact you just clean the nipple with warm water with the first feed and you always have to give the cholesterol to the baby because it helps it is so rich in antibodies it can prevent a lot of infections it also helps in adequate weight gain for the baby the long term illnesses that uh, breast milk prevents uh, is asthma eczema a lot of allergies uh, and the wonderful part of it though we've stopped breastfeeding after 6 yeah. months to 2 years mm-hmm. its effects are so long term that even in adulthood it prevents diabetes blood pressure problem obesity uh, it also prevents gastrointestinal infections and there are some infants who have this uh seeds this is sudden infant infant death syndrome okay. so even all of the all of these things are prevented simply by the art and by the simple gift of breastfeeding by the mother to the baby let's come to the mothers okay so these were the benefits yeah, these for were the, the ben- benefits for the baby. i just forgot uh, two three more things very important is sure. brain power go ahead okay yeah, yeah. so uh, the breastfed babies uh, through various uh, consensus through various surveys that we have seen are way way more intelligent as compared to the bottle fed babies and uh, breastfeeding is so simple it is ready it is portable you don't have to specially buy it from somewhere and it is cheap and hygienic okay uh, and many mothers think small breast give small milk and big breast give big milk the size really doesn't matter okay mm-hmm. so that is something uh, which is very important message that i want to give you all, all across because many people get affected with the size of the breast Uh, and the milk production okay. also it creates a very very special emotional bond with, between the mother and baby so emotional bonding okay. these are all the benefits of the baby for the baby from breast from breastfeeding okay the benefits to mother are even more better i always okay. say you will look so much more beautiful because they start losing a lot of weight uh, which they have gained during pregnancy so okay. almost a good amount of 8 to 10 kgs of weight loss that many mothers experience when they feed the babies 
uh, breast milk mm -hmm. the second thing is uh, decreased incidence of breast and ovarian cancer isn't that wonderful that so, simple um, weight loss and uh, this is the second one yes okay. okay so just by breastfeeding it can prevent these cancers that is breast and ovarian cancer okay uh, besides that there is a decreased incidence of depression in the mothers okay and also at the time of breastfeeding when you first start doing that the uterus contracts so bleeding also becomes lesser and you almost have all noticed that there is no menses when you are breastfeeding for a good one year or so or even more mm -hmm. simply because the body tries to conserve the energy that is lost through menses okay uh, so you will not have menses and it requires almost 2 years for a mother to recover from the delivery process to recover okay. the iron stores then that's okay. why we say to space the pregnancies between two babies to 2 years because okay. the mother needs to recover so uh, these were the benefits to both the baby and the mother. And the mother. Okay. Uh, nice doctor. I'm sure uh, at least uh, most of our listeners, I'm sure, have benef uh, benefited listening to the benefits. <laughs> How long should a mother be breastfeeding? According to the WHO guidelines, we uh, encourage mothers to exclusively breastfeed for the first six months post-delivery. The meaning of the word exclusive is just breast milk is good enough to the babies and that means not even water so okay. uh, milk has mother's milk has everything in the right proportion right from water nutrients vitamins and everything that a mother uh, requires to give the baby and the baby needs from the mother so a very important thing to note is many mothers think that the baby is thirsty and they give separately water that is absolutely not to be done so it is exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of birth Thereafter, okay. uh, you all can start weaning the babies. Weaning is a process by which we slowly uh, reduce the number of feeds by introducing new foods one at a time. And people get so excited to introduce foods to the baby that they do it all at one time. Okay. This can be a problem. Okay. So it's always better. The rule is to introduce one food in one week. Okay. And sometimes the babies. Uh, may like it, may not like it. They all take time to adjust. And uh, another tip, uh, tip for all of y'all is to add breast milk to that food, whichever mm -hmm. you're puring and giving to the baby. So the baby will have a little bit of uh, breast milk and will be encouraged to receive that uh, weaning food that you introduce to the baby. Okay. Uh, breastfeeding can be given as long, I would say, as long as the baby demands. Uh, I would put it up to two years. Okay. Uh, so definitely yes. But you need to win somewhere at six months because the babies are also smart. They become very intelligent uh, over a period of, uh, you know, after six months, eight months, they understand everything. It is very difficult then to win off. Uh, okay. So the weaning part has to happen at six months and then slowly, slowly you reduce mm -hmm. and stop it at two years. Okay. Now this was, uh, doctor, you answered like, you know, overall, um, you know, how and when to stop uh, breastfeeding, like completely. What about on a, I mean, at the moment when they do breastfeed, when do, would a mother know that the baby is full? At that time, what, when does a mother uh, know when to stop? So when you're giving a breastfeed to the baby, mm -hmm. the baby, when it is full, it will start slipping on the breast. It oh. slips on the breast. Uh, and that time it will open its mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be very relaxed. The fist, the hand fist, they, they usually are, uh, you know, they fist out their hands. Mm -hmm. The fingers will automatically open. The palms will automatically open and it will be in a relaxed position. Okay. Uh, it may also take its mouth out of the nipple, uh, showing disinterest towards uh, breast milk because it's already full. Okay. Uh, and it may start playing and doing everything else but uh, feeding. So okay. this is something uh, which you should observe and every baby is different. Mm -hmm. Some babies take half an hour to drink milk and some finish it in five minutes. Okay. So don't get upset. Oh, my baby is taking so long. Mm -hmm. Some mothers also think, uh, is it enough uh, for my baby? To start with, the baby's stomach is that of a small bottle cap the bisleri bottle cap so oh. that is the volume later on as they keep drinking you know as they grow their capacity of the stomach increases and their need also increases okay so the baby itself will show you signs like slipping at the breast opening the mouth relaxed uh, hands and it will start slipping off so these okay. are the signs that the baby is full 
Okay, doctor. Okay. Right at the start of this uh, interview, you had just mentioned you had said about the theme for uh, this year's uh, WBW. Okay, and uh, you said that it's uh, let's make breastfeeding and work work. So, uh, can you tell us more about this? So, we usually see a problem with working mothers. Okay. Uh, the problem is they want to feed, but they are not able to feed their babies. which is a huge deal for all of us not for just that one mother mm-hmm. because healthier children make a healthier world tomorrow they are our future generations so uh, what we often notice is mothers are out for work for 6 to 8 hours okay. and we encourage all mothers to feed every 2 hourly but is it practically possible it okay. isn't Yeah. till we don't give the support to that mother okay. at workplace by family by father and everybody possible should put their hands together to help this mother feed the baby at least for the first 6 months uh, though india has introduced a bill in 2016 called the maternity benefit amendment bill mm-hmm. which said that there should be paid maternity leave for the first 6 months post delivery which was earlier just 3 months okay. uh, before this Mm-hmm. for the first two children that she gives birth to mm-hmm. and subsequently it is then reduced for the third and the fourth to just 3 months okay. but this rule or this amendment was only for the government sector what about those many mothers working in the private sector mm-hmm. so which is a large chunk yeah yeah so practically as of now there is no answer to this mm-hmm. and we really really need to work on the policies because if the uh, we don't work on the policies then we cannot practically do anything for the mothers okay, what we can yeah. right now do is express the breast milk and store it so that people at home can at least feed the breast milk of the mother mm-hmm. to the baby in the mother's absence instead of giving bottle feeds which is a big no no how okay. to store it is what i'm going to tell you next okay uh, so it's a very simple method Okay we need to know how to store it where to store it and how to give it back to the baby okay uh, so expressing the breast milk can be done either manually by the mother itself or by breast pumps there are very good mm-hmm. breast pumps available mm-hmm. manual as well as electrical breast pumps okay. i would su- uh, suggest you all to buy and invest in a good electrical breast pump because that uh, saves a lot of time okay. uh, once you express the milk you can store it at room temperature uh in in this climate of goa we can it can stand at room temperature for up to 4 hours in the summer season i would say around 2 hours or okay. lesser uh mm-hmm. or even safer than that would be to store it in the uh, fridge now okay. very important uh, point here is you store it in the door of the fridge uh, and not in plastic containers in the small stainless steel containers with lid you cover it okay uh, if you are storing it in the fridge you can store it for up to 4 days in the door uh, whereas in the freezer it can remain for up to 4 months to 6 months okay. but that's not really required that is for t- uh, ill mothers and things like that okay so i think room temperature and the fridge door mm-hmm. when you're giving the milk back to the baby you mm-hmm. cannot give cold milk so you use the boiler in boiler method okay. where you take the milk from the fridge put it in the stainless steel uh, in the from the stainless steel container and you place it in a bigger vessel with hot water okay. so you're not directly boiling the milk but instead you're just warming the milk also while feeding you use the katori chamcha method in hindi i'm saying it. so it's a small stainless steel <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh small stainless steel bowl and a spoon uh which is clean and sterilized and you give the baby with that or mm-hmm. you get something called as a palladay spoon a spoon with a small beak which which you can easily feed the baby from the corner of the mouth okay so this is mm-hmm. how you store and you feed and i think if all of us put our hands together uh, right from the mothers mother in laws fathers mm-hmm. and everybody at home it's a community effort i don't say it's that one mother's effort it's a community yeah. effort to breastfeed in fact that's what i just wanted to ask you what are some ways to support these working mothers who are breastfeeding you know so um uh, yes so uh, one of them is how to actually assist the mother mm-hmm. in feeding secondly at workplaces uh, it is very important to have private rooms for them so you know mm-hmm. separate rooms for breastfeeding mm-hmm. so privacy is maintained yes. a clean quiet hygienic room uh, because babies require a peaceful environment yes. uh, a place where mother can actually wash the uh, 
the expressing a uh, pump or or her hands a good wash basin to wash her hands uh, and keep it clean uh, these are the small points that we can actually help mm-hmm. many offers become so embarrassed when a mother opens the breast in public mm-hmm. places but it is every baby's birthright so this yeah. is something which we should not shun away oh my god this lady is just exposing her breast mm-hmm. and uh, in fact we should be more conducive uh, and be okay with uh, mm-hmm. breastfeeding in india specifically yes. we yeah, look exactly. down on it yeah. but in other countries in western mm-hmm. countries it is not so mm-hmm. so baby can cry when the baby is hungry anywhere whether it's the bus in a public place in a train mm-hmm. and i mm-hmm. think there should be no looking down on it because the baby is demanding and the mother needs to give at that point of time very nice well explained doctor you know i must ask you um, what is the role of a father papa you know in this whole process of um, you know where a mother is into this breastfeeding process is there any role anything that the pa- father can do or does the father is a very integral part of the family unit and if fathers support the mothers nothing like it mm-hmm. uh, i always believe there are three <laughs> pillars of health diet exercise and sleep and mm-hmm. these all three are essential to have a very healthy body and a mind the mind is very important because many mothers go to postpartum depression okay it is very important to feed the mothers well because if the mother is not well fed not well hydrated then the milk also will not be enough or there will be a poor supply or the milk will stop much earlier than expected okay the second thing that i always say is take turns uh, especially when it comes to sleep mm-hmm. if the mother is going to get up every 2 hourly to breastfeed and the feed lasts for 30 minutes each then the mother is completely sleep deficient and which means at least for the uh, putting the baby to nap and the other things where which does not require breastfeeding which obviously the father can't do yeah. changing of the <laughs> diapers and whatever he can help in uh the uh, helping the mother to put this baby together all the energy all the effort that is required by the father in decreasing the mother's efforts mm-hmm. uh will really go a long way in helping the mother to breastfeed not just efficiently but also to keep a very happy and healthy mind okay and uh, doctor uh, you know uh, what about this uh, postpartum blues that goes on for years can you tell us something more about it uh? the most of the western world actually knows about postpartum depression and they okay. are more accepting okay. i don't know in india why people look down upon it they just immediately label you as mad and it is very important to understand it is very much present mm-hmm. postpartum depression is quite common in our indian mothers but um, sadly it is not recognized okay. many mothers do come telling us uh, about various depressive uh situations suicidal tendencies and mm-hmm. so many negative thoughts that they go across okay. and the journey unfortunately goes unnoticed and mothers trying to cope up when we can actually help them it is very very common so please if a mother is speaking about it definitely there are so many other factors which the pregnancy the delivery the breastfeeding the lack of sleep uh, it is like a mania at home mm-hmm. so obviously it's a big change for the mother So I yeah. think everybody should be more listening, more accepting and if there is a problem we should deal it rather than just defy the problem. So I feel it's very very common to have depression in okay. pregnancy okay. and definitely we should not leave our mothers alone to deal with depression only okay. to realize that they have committed suicide or they have done something which is uh, which could have been addressed earlier. Okay doctor. And uh, with just a uh, three minutes left on uh, this uh, show, uh, listeners, uh, one last a uh, quick question to Doctor Sophia uh, Rodericks. And uh, Doctor, if you could give a message to all the breastfeeding mothers mo- and mothers generally, um, you know, mothers to be rather expecting mothers on the occasion of the World Breastfeeding Week. I'll keep the message very short and simple, yet okay. very powerful. Okay. Breastfeeding is the best gift that a mother can give the child. by best gift i mean there is no other gift better than breast milk and exclusively breastfeed the babies for the first 6 months at least to the baby after okay. that if you are not able to it is still okay so breastfeeding is the best gift that you can give to your babies okay and uh, so uh, that uh, rounds us up doctor I, i'm sure this was the first time you were here in the studio yes, right yeah. yes so a big thank you to dr sophia rodrix who uh, 
uh, came here to enlighten all of us uh, here on breastfeeding as uh, we celebrate this annual celebration the on the occasion of the world breastfeeding week that is held each year from 1st to 7th august and dr sophia rodricks is a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist at manipal hospital uh, donna paula and wishing you all the very best doctor thank you so much for uh, making the time and being with us here on 105.4 fm rainbow thank you so much velma it was lovely being here Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird If that mockingbird won't sing Mama's gonna buy you a diamond ring If that diamond ring turns brass Mama's gonna buy you a looking glass If that looking glass gets broke Mama's gonna Mama's gonna buy you a cardinal if that- 